Hey guys, what's up? What did you need? Uh, we're gonna do another video today, uh, accounting for foreign currency in uh, three minutes or less. Tax return. Okay. The tax return. Oh man, I'm already overshot. Ver expense. If you break down total income tax expense for the tax, it's made up of really weird That really is there. It's made up of different tax situations. It's not tax. That line has this. It's gonna be fine. Okay. All right. ASC Topic 830 provides guidance on foreign currency transactions and translations under U.S. GAAP. Before we talk about that accounting, let's discuss a few definitions. First, foreign currency. This is any currency other than the functional currency of the entity. Functional currency is really the key to the accounting under ASC Topic 830, and this is the currency of the primary economic environment in which the entity operates. Reporting currency. This is the currency in which the reporting entity prepares its financial statements, and sometimes that may be different from the functional currency. So taking a look at the chart on your screen, you can see functional currency is really the key to the accounting. Entities will sometimes enter into transactions in a foreign currency. Those transactions have to be remeasured into the functional currency of the entity. Also, Sometimes entities prepare their financial statements in another currency that's not their functional currency. This may happen for a variety of reasons. If that's the case, those financial statements also have to be remeasured into the functional currency of the entity. Translation. That's at the top of the flow chart. If, a, if an entity is consolidating uh, in, in the reporting entity's currency is different from its functional currency, it has to do what's called a translation. Determining the entity's functional currency is really, really critical, and it is based on the entity's primary economic environment. Normally, this is determined based on the currency in which the entity generates and expends its cash. ASC Topic 830 provides a framework on how to make this determination, but no unequivocal criteria for determination. That means there's a lot of judgment involved in this decision. So when we talk about foreign currency transaction accounting. This is when an entity is entered into a transaction in a currency that's not its functional currency. At the date of that transaction, any asset, liability, revenue, or expense that's part of the transaction has to be remeasured into the functional currency using the current exchange rate. Now, subsequent measurement. Uh, subsequent measurement if we have a monetary asset or liability, it's going to be remeasured at the current exchange rate, and any gains or losses are recorded through the PL. Any non monetary assets and liabilities are remeasured using historical exchange rates. Now, foreign currency translation this is when we are going from the functional currency of the entity into the reporting uh, currency, which is usually part of a consolidation. Uh, into the parent's uh, financial statements. Uh, translation, when we have assets and liabilities that are part of the translation, those are translated using the rate on the date of the balance sheet. P&L accounts, those are translated using the rate that was in effect on the date of the transaction, um, but usually a weighted average rate is used as an approximate rate. Equity accounts are translated using historical rate, and retained earnings in OCI are also historical rate by tranche. The real key here is that when you're doing a translation, any gains or losses on translation are recorded in other comprehensive income, which is a component of equity. Well, talking about foreign currency transactions and translations in three minutes or less uh, was a tall order. Certainly, there's a lot more guidance out there and a lot more to it. If you want to learn more, come check out our foreign currency courses on the Gap Dynamics Learning Library. This is the final take, I swear. Here we go. ASC Topic 830. <laughs>